And so they own the science and they own the narrative. Myths and disinformation has nothing to do with truth. And in June of this year, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres uh, released a proposal for a code of conduct for digital platforms. Check this out. Our common agenda. There's your one world right there. Policy brief eight, information integrity on digital platforms. So this was just released this month. You can see United Nations and they got the SDG logo down there at the bottom. Now the purpose of this policy. Um, yeah, the present policy brief is focused on how threats to information integrity are having an impact on progress on global, national and local issues. This is all about the fact of uh, anybody who passes along truth um, is deemed somebody who is stopping progress. That's usually, I mean, that's nothing new. That's something that we've seen countless times before. If you don't follow along with what we want, then you are halting the progress. We need to progress forward. We need to be progressive. I've always taken the approach that I think we need to go back in time. I think we've progressed too far. I think we should just go back. You know, that's, that's my thing on the, the, the church as well. I think we've gotten into a lot of trouble and we see so many fallen and false churches out there because we've progressed with it. I think we need to go back to grandma's church personally. I think that's what we need to do. But that doesn't bring in numbers. That's boring for all these people. And so in our common agenda, I called for the empirically backed con, uh, consensus around facts, science, and knowledge. To that end, the precinct brief outlines potential policy, uh, principles for a code of conduct that will help member states, the digital platforms, and other stakeholders. Hmm. We see that a lot in this document as well. In their efforts to make the digital space more inclusive and safe for everybody, while vigorously defending the right to freedom of opinion, <laughs> that's classic, an expression, and the right to access information. No, no, the right to access their information, because they own the information, they own the science. The Code of Conduct for Information Integrity on Digital Platforms is being developed in the context of preparations for the Summit of the Future. We're going to talk about that. That thing is interesting. Um, I want to do more information on it but we're just going to kind of do a general scope of it. I do want to learn more about it. That thing is interesting. Uh, my hope is that, uh, that it will provide a gold standard, gold standard for guiding action to strengthen information integrity. It's just your propaganda. It's your, your, um, uh, uh, follow along with what we want follow along with our narrative and we'll make sure that you are paid. Well, that's basically because these briefs aren't for us. Uh, these briefs are for them. They just happen to post it out there for us to see. So that's what we see going on with that. Now, if we dig a little bit further into it, um, we're not going to read this whole thing. Don't worry. Um, but you can kind of see they've got a little bit of uh, definition, uh, defining words on this. Misinformation uh, refers to unintentional spread of inaccurate information. Just if we, we we're, we're going to laugh a lot through this, I got to try and make sure I'm not laughing a lot because it's just, it's straight propaganda, but it, they deem it, their definition is misinformation is the unintentional spread. Why they say disinformation is about the purposeful spread. So that's the difference between miss and dis on this is miss is, Oh, I'm sharing it with the purpose of, I thought it was truth while uh, disinformation is uh, basically, your intention is devious to actually put out false information. And then, of course, they got hate, spe hate speech according to the working definition in the United Nations strategy and plan of action. You'll notice it's always working definition. All of these things are working definition, which means they will change it at any time that they see fit. Kind of like what they did with the term recession. That's why I, that's why I keep saying we're already in a recession, but they never uh, say that we are is because they changed the definition of recession. That's why. And so it's a working definition to them. So that's what they do with all this stuff. So that's kind of what I want to uh, make sure you uh, understand with what they deem as miss, dis, and uh, information and hate speech and whatnot. So that's, that's basically what they're pushing out there like that. So you're getting an, an idea of 
you got to have uh, the the idea of what they in in the in the terms that they think while you go through these um uh these briefs otherwise you you start getting confused it's kind of like uh some people and I've talked about this before, but some people say, why are these politicians so stupid when they're making stupid decisions and whatnot? Well, it's not. Uh, a lot of them, there there are some that are just stupid, but there are a lot of them that aren't. And what they're doing is you have to take logic and set it on the shelf. And you have to start thinking in the terms of what they're trying to accomplish. And if you do that, it's not so stupid. So you have to do the same thing with these briefs. You have to take what we know is truth and logic and set it to the side and just go with what they're, they're thinking. Um, and it'll all make sense. It'll make sense of why they want to accomplish this stuff. Uh, so for the summit of the future though, I, like I said, I just kind of want to go over a general feel of this thing. This thing is interesting. So if we take a look at this, I kind of like highlighted the, the bottom part there cause it's really small. Um, it says the summit of the future, is a once in a generation opportunity to enhance cooperation on critical challenges and address gaps in global governance. We got a one world government coming. So when you see global governance, it's talking about the, uh, all the different governments globally, obviously, but we know that that's going to form into a one world government. So that's interesting wording there. Reaffirm existing commitments, including to the Sustainable Development Goals and the United Nations Charter and move, forward, uh, move towards a reinvigorated multilateral system that is better positioned to positively impact people's lives, building to the SDG Summit in 2023. Now, this thing is going to take place in 2024. So basically what they were doing with this is they were all these policy briefs that we're seeing. Uh, there's uh, how many? I don't remember how many of them. I, I, I'll, I'll show them in a, in, a, in a second. I've got them. Um, but there's a certain amount of policy briefs that started in March of this year that have, are being released up into the point of this meeting that they've got going. And those will all apply to this summit of the future and there's a lot of stuff going on with this these briefs we've talked about a couple of them uh one of them was the the uh, complex uh global shocks uh where it's like the one one world police type of type of system and there's other ones as well this digital one that we're talking about as well is on there but it's all leading up to the summit of the future everything seems to be pointing towards this particular event that's going to happen in 2024 and this thing looks like it's going to be the gas that's going to get thrown onto the fire. And it's slated again for 2024. That's the same year as the pandemic treaty and the international health regulation amendments that, that they're going to be adopted. So you're going to have in May, those get adopted. And I believe this thing happens in September of next year. And you're starting to see everything coming together under one roof as far as global governance. And so it's important that we watch that take place because we know the one world government is coming. That's one of the pillars of the Antichrist B system. And so this looks like it's gonna be the fire that gets thrown onto that. So if we take a look at what they're calling their, their road map or the road to the summit of the future, they kind of break down what we've seen so far and what's to come. So in 20, uh, 2015, the 2030 agenda was applied. Uh, that was the, um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the upgrade, so to say, from Agenda 21. And so that was adopted in 2015 along with the SDGs. Then in 2020, there's the UN 75 Declaration. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. Then in 2021, the Our Common Agenda. Um, that's when, that's these briefs that we're seeing. That's the new stuff that they're introducing. 2023, the SDG Summit. And then two, uh, we've got the Summit of the Future and then the Pact for the Future. The pact for the future. That's interesting. That's very interesting. What What is going to be all involved with that pact? I don't know. They have not really uh, given us anything on that. But could there be a peace agreement in there? Quite possibly. Something to think about. Now, I'm not saying that there is. Don't Don't get me wrong. But that's definitely something to think about as far as that. And this has been in the makings for a while. 
as we can see, pointing to being a uh, this being a pinnacle event for them. I mean, this looks like it's going to be a huge, uh, like world changing thing that's going to happen in 2024. And ultimately, it's seeming to be a pinnacle moment for the beast system development. Um, I mean, this is something that I mean, we've been watching for some some type of indication that there's going to be a coming together and that's why we watch so heavily with the pandemic treaty because when we were watching that you're talking about all global health governance being put under the who the who all being put under them and now we're seeing something happen with the un with this summit of the future and the pact that they're talking about so if we keep going and talking about this thing uh work on the summit has already commenced in 2023 now right here uh, we just, I just wanted to point this out right here. Uh, the Secretary General updated the General Assembly in August of 2022 and February of 2023 on uh, progress relating to our common agenda discussing the summit. He will also release a series of policy briefs. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's what we're uh, looking at here. Starting in March of 2023 in anticipation for the member states' uh, preparations. So if we look at these... There's uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's 11 of them. Uh, there's 8 on screen, but there's 11 total. Um, we got Future Generations, the Emergency Platform. That's the one that we talked about uh, with the Global Shocks. Youth Engagement, Beyond Gross Domestic uh, Product. Then we've got things like the Global Digital Compact, uh, the Information Integrity. That's this one that we're discussing now. And International Financial Architecture. You're starting to see the, the One World Currency right there. You've got outer space as well. This is where we find things that are, we're starting to get an idea of some of these. We haven't discussed all of them, um, but some of them, like the global shocks, that's like your police force, your international financial architecture, that's looking at your one world economy, information integrity, that's the lockdown on digital platforms. Beyond gross domestic product, you're looking at uh, the supply chain, things like that. You're starting to see everything come to fruition on what they're going to need to control the world but it's the last three that really grab my attention and i'm sure you can see why towards a new agenda for peace new agenda for peace very curious Especially since we know that the Antichrist, he's going to come in and he's going to seal the deal on a seven-year peace treaty. Then we've got transforming education, which we'll actually talk about a little bit of that at the end of, of this episode. And then United Nations 2.0. Just kind of makes you think, is that the beast system? that's going to come some very, very interesting ones in there. Huh? And it's, this stuff is supposed to be all adopted next year. Interesting. Now, again, cause I know some people are going to take what I'm saying and they're going to go, so your 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 date claiming you're saying that it's going to happen on this day or it's going to happen at, i'm not doing that at all but what i'm doing is i'm watching i'm looking at these signs and what they're pointing to that's what the lord tells us to do because he knows he, or he's told us that nobody knows the day or the hour but we will know the season and we're talking about a global pact of all the governments that's supposed to take place the same year that all of the global health governance is supposed to fall under the who. And then we're talking about peace. We're talking about the UN 2.0. We're talking about a world police force on it. We're talking about digital takeover. We're talking about a one world currency. All of this stuff is all falling together at the same time next year, which is exciting. Because that's telling us, that's 
telling us that we're in the season, that we're getting closer. We're that much closer to going home. And so it's something that we got to pay attention to, especially with this peace thing, because that's the big one. That's where the Antichrist is going to be revealed when that when that uh, peace uh, uh, agreement gets signed, the peace treaty gets signed. He's going to be revealed. We're not going to be here for that. So that can't happen till we're gone. So that's why I think it's important that we look at all this stuff. 